Oh, hello, and welcome to how to put a microphone on because it's weirdly a thing that you don't know how to do until you are meant to do it on people's heads that you don't know. Today, I'm going to show you a bunch of the different ways that we put microphones onto performers for shows. What I don't have for you today is an ear rig, a microphone that goes on a boom across the cheek and sits on the ear. For one of those, you would tape it to the back of the ear. Moving on. I do not have a real human person with me. I have this wig on a block to do this demonstration. Do not worry about this front angle. I'm going to show you like a top down angle as well so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Let's do a thing. If the person you're putting a microphone on is wearing their natural hair, no wig, just their hair out, what you're going to need on the microphone cable is clips. These are toupee clips with little bits of elastic spun through them so that you can put the microphone through the bits of elastic and they will stay in there. I like my toupee clips really tight. Some people don't like them that tight but I do just because then the mic will stay on the clip a little bit easier. You can use the end of a comb to separate the elastic and feed the microphone through. You also use the end of a comb to separate someone's hairline. I, because I have long nails, prefer to use nails because I feel like I can rely on my judgment of the pressure that I'm using a little bit better. If I'm using a comb, I don't really know how hard I'm pressing on someone's head. Some people have more sensitive scalps than others. It's also a very weird thing to be all up in someone's hair, so I prefer to be as careful as possible. For the sake of the fact that I'm using a wig which has a lace, I'm also going to be using my nails for the demonstration just because I don't want to be running a comb along the top of the lace. So what you're going to do is you're going to separate the hair. This is already separated at the front which is a good guideline for us to kind of go back. You would separate it all the way to the back. Get the person you're micing up to hold it if you need to and then you would start with the first clip near the front of the hairline. This one is parted at the center but if it was someone's natural hair it probably would not be a center part and you would go off to the side so that you can hide the cable underneath their hair. Usually you would do this in this position behind somebody sitting in front of a mirror so that you can see the position of their microphone and then you're just going to put the clip down, pull it back and press the sides to clip it down. That is the first clip. I've not gone as hard on it as I would normally because again there's a lace underneath this instead of a human's head but the closer you get it to their actual head instead of up in the hair the better the position is going to be. If you have a microphone that's like dangling off the front of someone's forehead chances are the clip is hanging up in the top of the hair instead of actually on the scalp. And then you're going to do it the rest of the way down. Some people have a preference for the middle clip whether they want it here or here like on the back of their head or on the top of the crown. That is a personal preference for you in terms of how you like to mic people up or how other people like to be mic'd up. I personally like to put it on the top here. That's just my personal preference. I also like that clip to face towards me. Some people like it to face the other way. Those are just little things that you will figure out with each cast member, each show that you do, each microphone you use. And the one at the back, you're going to push down and then slide up and then you can pull the cable through and then you hide all of the cable with the hair. Make sure it's in the right position, tape on the back of their neck and that's done. If the person is wearing a wig, they'll put their hair into whatever wig prep works best for their specific hair and the specific wig that they are wearing. For the sake of this demonstration, I have just really dodgily put a wig cap over the top of this wig. And then what you're gonna do is put the cable on top, center it with the person's face, and you're gonna use wig pins. I like to bend the wig pins a little bit so that they sit flatter on the person's head. I try and do this because if there is a bit of like pin sticking up, I just worry that it could damage the lace. It looks messier. I just like to do that so it's a little bit neater. So what you're going to do is one at the front. Typically the one at the front I will just slide up into the wig cap that way so that it keeps the microphone in place. And then the two at the back, what we're going to do is grab on one side a bit of the wig cap, go over the top of the cable and then tuck it underneath so that the cable is wrapped up by the wig cap. And then you're going to do it again on the bottom at the back. You can do this in all different kinds of locations depending on where you need the microphone to be or what the wig is like. I try to do it on the center or if it is a wig that has a certain part, I will do it in the part so that it looks a little bit neater. And then the wig goes on top and you're all ready to go.
If you remember the microphone that I was talking about in the previous video last week, this is it. This one is designed for the mic pack to go into the wig prep underneath the wig. Sometimes people will use a wig cap that has pouches put into it for the transmitters and other times you will get a whole pouch made that will just stick onto the wig cap. I kind of prefer this option because sometimes wig caps go quicker than you would like them to and it just means that you don't have to rely on them staying good. So what you're going to do in this case is pin through the corner of the pack pouch and then you're just going to dig that underneath and you're going to do that on all four corners. The placement of where this is going to go on the performer's head will usually be a choice of the wig team because they need to be able to allow space for the packs to go within the person's wig without it impacting the design and how it looks. Once this is all pinned down typically they will put a wig cap on top of it to protect the antennas and keep everything in nice and secure. This mic like I was saying this is a great example because I haven't actually done proper wig prep on this. There is not a lot of hair going on on top. So this would go down onto the performer's head. All we're going to do is go just like the other one from the side over the top and under. I did not bend this pin correctly but that is super tight and it is gripping because of the helmet to the wig cap and not to the person's hair which is in this case what we wanted. You would do that a couple more times down the cable and then maybe even one at the front to hold the position down. And that is all of the ways that I would typically put a microphone on somebody for a show. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I will make sure to answer them. If you are somebody who does this regularly and you have some tips and tricks, please also leave those below or head over to the Discord and we can have a more lengthy chat with everybody there. Make sure you're subscribed so you can see next week's video. And if there are any kinds of things like this that you would like to see in the future, leave a comment below and I will make it happen.